At the cool capital of the world, Berlin has earned a reputation as being too cool for school, which is quite a shame because the university system here is basically free. <laughs> No, okay. A city that has been plagued by a dark history, Berlin is always remixing its future? Remixing because the techno scene's like huge in Berlin. Oh, it's at, it's at. The Berlin Wall stands today as a reminder that division and divisiveness are way out, and inclusivity and acceptance are way in. To simplify, out is out, and in is in. After all, you can't spell Berlin without in. So stupid, I gotta delete that. Okay, my name is Damon Dominique and I'm here to return some plastic. What, 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 yes. And then put plastic bottles in here because we are about to go take advantage of the system that I got in Germany called the fan system. Come with me, Eloito. I had to Google Translate that. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here at Aldi, a German favorite supermarket, to win at the recycling game. Now, is it just a train passing by because you're always at a train station in Germany? Yes. Now, is it just a coincidence? I don't know. I don't know that the headquarters of Aldi could be found in Essen, Germany. Now, what does Essen mean in German? It means to eat. Like, who came up with that one? First y'all got the fan system, now y'all have your headquarters in Essen, Germany. Let's go recycle some plastic. Alright everyone, we're here at the fan station. Um, basically, when you buy plastic in Germany, there's an added fee attached onto it at the cash register, anywhere from 8 to 25 cents. And it's up to you to get that big old booty back to the supermarket to reclaim what's yours. Cents. Just go for it, huh? Oh shit, oh my god. Oh wait, I'm not done, I'm not done. Oh my, no. Okay, well, that was 25 cents. Barcode continues to be using them. The internet warned me about this. Not all supermarkets take all brands because it's not their responsibility to pay out, pay you back your money if you didn't shop there in the first place. Huh. I'm not done. Oh my god, I'm not done. Chang, chang, getting paid over there. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, I get it, you don't take this brand. I tried to school him. Man, you got 75 cents to spend. This fant money got me feeling heavy. All right, so, did you guys know that Germans love, like, their varying levels of bubbles in their water? Yeah, yeah, um, if you want to get a bottle of water, it's not that simple here in Germany. No, no, no. You can get medium water, you can get classic water, and you can get natural water. Let's see which one she's gonna pick. You actually don't have to buy anything, so I'm just gonna go check. Oh, give me my cash. I said, where's my, I want the euros. Hello. Hello. Ab jetzt bitte die Kamera weg. Kamera weg. Yo, I got yelled at by Aldi. Not Berghain, not one of these underground raves, yo. A supermarket. Damn, they said, we don't want anybody advertising all this recycling program. No, 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 there's enough recycling. <laughs> yo, ich bin in der U-Bahn. On the station, I'm going to go to the station. For the Yo, look at how many people are outside just like living their life right now. It's like a festival. Why skating? How did you get into skating? There was a day I want I was meeting with a friend. Oopsie! I mean, I found a post outside and it said roller disco. Da -da -da, um, at that day, first time in a year. Da -da -da. I was like, oh my god, I need to go there. I've never done this before. And I went with my friend and we did that. And since then, I fall in love. Like I just like it. It's different when you try to dance on it and then someone tells you, yeah, like you know, transition, do this, do a step. And in the beginning, it was really difficult to kind of get that and it's hard to get the muscles even you don't have it. You 
know what? In the beginning, when I started skating outside, it was quite intimidating because you know what? You're dancing in front of people. I mean, you hear your music and you you feel it, but then people look at you maybe and they oh, and I don't want to hide and I want to, uh, mm -hmm. but you have to get used to it. Let's dance. Hi. <laughs> you you know, does everybody know everybody here? Everyone talks to everybody. <laughs> That's yeah. great. Are you German too? Uh, no, actually I'm from Turkey. Oh, cool. You meet so many new people that you can create stuff with or... Yeah, even these people here, I, I just showed up. I don't know anybody and they were like, oh, so you're making a video? I'm like, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, I am. Yeah, totally. And everybody's so open to it, you know? Is this where most people skate? Tempenhof? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And why? This, this here is the, it's the best place. So it's an abandoned airport. Um, the building right there, like this whole air, airport building, is the, it was the longest uh, connected building in the whole, in the whole world. Oh, oh damn. Yeah, they have like so many different areas and they're um, building up new spaces for creative people and uh, just want to do something for the community, you know. And they're also building new airports, you know, like this one VER, which is still not finished. <laughs> <laughs> like, still not done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I have a question. People say that Berlin is like the most free place. Mm -hmm. Do you think that? And like, wh what about it is so free? So I think for me is that you, you stand up, you're not, you don't have makeup on and just go out and buy yourself a bread. And the judgment is not, well, I don't say there's no judge, but there's less judgment in comparison with other cities, mm -hmm. I guess. So um, you, ju you just can't be free and you can't be you. And there's no problem about it. Easy. <laughs> Yo, so I'm on my walk home and I felt like I should mention the the word for these people is genuine. Like period. When you talk, I feel like they listen to you. This is such a blanket, a general statement. I know it's not true for everybody, but I've noticed here more than anywhere. It's like the whole city's a damn festival. Like, you want to know why you like Berlin? It's because you walk by the park and not one person is on their phone. Do y'all see one phone screen? In fact, if there is somebody on the phone, they're choosing the music for everybody. I think that's why you like have this sense of like a genuine connection with people. I'm digging it. I'm so excited. <laughs> I talk about you all the time. <laughs> I'm like, I met you one night, like in Palestine. I'm like, I want to talk to you. Can Come I go in? Yes, okay. Hi. Good to see you. <laughs> all right, so Yang and I met in Palestine. Now, yes, you heard that correctly. Not just, not just anywhere. We met in Palestine, the West Bank, in a shared dorm. We were in the same dorm, Yang. When I met you, you said you were going on like a world tour or something to find a new place to raise your children or to live, right? I just want to find the ideal place, no where to live. You were going all over the place. Where were you going? Uh, we went to different cities in the US, mm -hmm. into Morocco, into Japan, China, Singapore, Indonesia, where we met Israel, Palestine. And that but was it wasn't it wasn't a trip to find the ideal place. It's more because I really interested in Israel and Palestine for a long time. All my working situation is perfect for me right now. So this is also part of your life, right? So it's not only which uh, culture you would prefer. You're also an author. I'm her biggest fan. Like I don't think you understand. Again, I just think it's super. In you're like living your life. You're just like outliving your life and. When people ask you, you're like, yeah, like I was in Indonesia for four months. Yeah, I was. <laughs> um, you have all these books right behind me, actually, and they're comparing and contrasting different parts of culture. The East meets West one. You're originally from China. Exactly. Yes, I uh, came here beginning of the 90s, right after Warfall. So um, back then, I think Berlin was actually quite similar to China, where I was from. It was both socialist, so actually I feel felt quite familiar when I came here. Yeah. Lots of things have influenced me. I think also I also stayed uh, a while in Turkey, so that also influenced me. What do you mean you stayed? What were you doing in Turkey? 
I was teaching in the art school there for. Uh, <laughs> I also have adapted lots of things um, in all the country I spent a little time with. So um, I think part of me is Chinese, part of me is German. I think I definitely have some Turkish part. And also, I haven't been to Cuba for so long, but I love it so much. Were there any things back in the day that you actually preferred to nowadays, I don't know, in terms of Berlin? Oh, and lots of things. I was only 13, but I, when I came to Berlin later to studying, there's lots of occupied houses by young people, by artists. It was a lot of life and um, money doesn't play any role. I pass all these parks in Berlin and it's like a Wednesday at 1 p.m. and everyone's outside enjoying their life. And I think the question on everyone's mind is, what does everyone do to pay the bills? Like, why aren't they at work? Which again is like a very, I guess, American way to think of it, like our existence is just work, work, work. Everyone's just out living their life, which is nice, but how? I think people, first of all, doesn't have a very big bill to pay. That's the thing about Berlin, but it already have changed. So now Berlin is much more expensive than probably 10, 20 years before. Like all other big cities, like uh, everybody, interesting young artists, musicians are coming to Berlin and that make the cultural scenes so interesting. And then the real estate people come, etc., etc. So and that's basically over. the same story all over the world. All right. When all is said and done, and you're done at work, and your kids are at home with the babysitter, where do you go in Berlin? At the Turkish bakeries. They open at night, so they serve uh, mint tea, and they give it will give you a giant bowl and a package of sunflower seeds. So you would just sit there with your friends and uh, eat those seeds and through the um, rest into this giant ball. It's such a fun atmosphere. So I took a babysitter, really, I took a babysitter twice to go to these <laughs> Turkish sweet shops to spend their three hours the night. This is what I'm saying, you guys. All the people you meet in Berlin, not all of them, but like a lot of the people you meet in Berlin, whether they choose to be there, they want to be there, like they're all like interesting. I was just leaving, she was like, oh yeah, I spent a month in Moscow. I was like, w when? Like, when did you do that? And what were you doing there? I just feel like you have all these stories that you just like come out of nowhere like, yeah, I was, I yelled at a police officer in the Dubai airport because he was mistreating somebody and then I went to jail, like what? <laughs> do you find them interesting? Or is this just like, this is how life should be? Well, I find it interesting, but uh, I, I didn't, perceive it the way you just told me. I was really uh, surprised that you said this is so interesting. I thought this is just, you know, what I did. But um, because I was interested in those places, I'm going there because I had a desire, it has a call in me, mm -hmm. but I thought I have to go there. Like Cuba, for a long time, I, I just really have the feeling I have to go there. That's why I went there. Yo, she has such an interesting life story. I'm so happy that like our paths crossed. And again, that is like my goal in life. That should be everyone's goal. Every sentence that comes out of your mouth is like a new story that you embarked on. Let's go to the Turkish place. When I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord that I wake again. I wake again. I pray the Lord that I wake as the Germans is that they're very honest, direct people. And I've never really noticed this as something that's like specifically German, but I will say that even down to the metro, even down to the, the network of public transportation, there's no turnstile. Like you are expected to pay your fare and like everyone hopes that you do. And then of course, because it is the honor system, sometimes they have controllers that get on the subway system and they're like, all right, tickets out. And then you have to show that you actually paid. Meine Freundin hat mir gesagt, hier kommen, but 
ich weiß nicht, was uh, to get. They come in. Was ist die am um, meisten ah, Sunflower Seeds? Oder ich will hier, hier sitzen mit einer Getränke, Turkish Tea. Alright, I'm missing something. I need this. I need this bowl that everybody has. I need the bowl. Give you a giant bowl and a package of sunflower seeds. I don't have the bowl, you guys. I'm doing it wrong. I'm, it's clear that I'm not Turkish. I don't know what I'm getting a bowl. Like, do I, t I don't take that same bowl. Oh, no. All right, so during the Cold War, there was a time when um, West Germany was giving out visas. They needed some people for the workforce. And a lot of the Turkish community came over here to work. And so now, there's a huge Turkish population here in Berlin. Are you German too? Uh, no, explain, I'm from Turkey. Oh, cool. Forget this, I'm 29 years old. I'm gonna go get that bowl. Go back. Okay, I'm learning, I'm learning. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. He said, yeah, thank you. Thank you for learning. Right? It's like that, right? Damn, y'all see me over here? Oh, this was two euros and 70 cents. I forgot to say that. Well, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but Berlin is very much on that urban decay kind of architecture and design. In fact, when I was interviewing Yang, she was like, oh, there was graffiti on my building, but they took it away. I was like, they took it away. And she was like, no, they took it away. And I was like, that's interesting. As a designer, do you feel like Berlin is a beautiful city? Berlin is an interesting city. I won't say it's a beautiful, it has beautiful places, but it's not, you know, a very sweet, beautiful city. It's a very interesting, dynamic city. Mm -hmm. Does the graffiti affect you or? Well, the graffitis are gone, unfortunately, especially this part of Berlin, they're all gone. They were here everywhere 10 years before, and 20 years before, much more. They're all um, been vanished by all these new constructions. Oh my god, I've been here for one hour. This bag is as if I didn't even start. And this is my American side, I'm just wondering like, how do they make money? Like how do you... I hate that my brain always goes there, especially in a place like Berlin where like money is not... Money is not what it is, like it's not about money. But like, again, like how do you pay rent though? Like this was 270 and I'm still chewing, it's been an hour. I'm taking up table space. If this were, you know, any other country, the waitress would come around and be like, would you like the check? Well, another question is what to do with my regurgitated sunflower seeds. Oh, here he comes, let me ask. Entschuldigung, uh, was mache ich mit das? Ah, danke. He said, throw it in the trash. Like. Alright, so these photo booths are everywhere, you guys. They're like in front of supermarkets, they're in parking lots, they're inside of techno clubs. And like, you ain't been to Berlin till you have a photo in one of these. I was gonna take one the other night, I was coming home <clears throat> drunk from a drag show in Friedrichshain, and I was passing by and I was like, not tonight, but I think I failed myself. I think that's the point. You're supposed to come and get that picture when you pass one. These are the things that make Berlin what it is for me. Like, of course you can go to the Brandenburger tour, you can go to Checkpoint Charlie, and you should. But for me, I think this is like just as interesting. Like, why are there all these photo booths around town? Who came up with this? Why? Like, clearly this isn't a big money maker. So many questions, 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 questions. questions, questions. We're going back to this subject of like, it's not all about money. And it's about like living a fun, cool, almost like mysterious life. Like, oh, there's a photo booth on the side of the highway. Let me just go take a picture. Cause that's like what makes life fun. Anyways, shut up. I'm gonna start taking pictures. <laughs> oh, by the way, they give you no warning. Oh shit, hurry. Oh, damn it. Well, that was fun. No, no warning, like, well, the picture is what it was. That's what I like about it. No filters, no five million edits. That's what you look like in that moment, for better or worse. <laughs> I didn't see they had a mirror here. Damn, if I look busted, it's your guys' fault. She's cooking.
All right, I am here at the Photo Automat headquarters. Headquarters, right? I like the headquarters. <laughs> oh, here. Ooh, here. Wow. <laughs> you don't know how much money I've given to you guys, by the way. I've taken so many, or maybe you do know because you have all these photos of everyone. <laughs> My first question, can you see every photo that has been taken in a photo booth? No, we don't see anything because it's an analog photo and uh, shot uh, exposure gets right onto the photo paper, which will then is cut and developed. Have you ever seen anything like weird, like any weird photos? Um, Not weird, I guess. Okay, we're in Berlin. Sorry, <laughs> no, nothing's weird. No, here. but I mean what, the bottom line. What I'm always surprised at uh, uh, seeing the photos. Uh, if, if you sometimes you find five, six, seven photos in a crashed machine, and I mean, it's a really it's a kissing booth. I mean, that's what it comes down to. You can, yeah. you can see all combinations of couples and people like uh, you're, you're getting close to each other. And uh, it's, it's always kind of hard, hard warming. Did you guys wake up one day and you're like, yeah, I want to put photo booths all over Berlin. Like what? Yeah, we had the idea. It's now, well, I guess, 15, 16 years ago. Um, we saw a photo booth in Zurich. We traveled to Zurich and then there was still this analog photo booth on the street. And then uh, we had the idea to put one booth here in Berlin because we liked it so much and we want to have it around the corner. We got about 25 photo booths in Berlin right now. And I, I studied photo engineering so I was, yeah, I was uh, so uh, crazy about this quality that it still exists, this analog system, and then we said, okay, we, we try it in Berlin. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like a far-fetched idea and it was yeah. for us too because, I mean, we had nothing to do with photo booths uh, uh, or even running a business. Now, when I take photos on these things, there is no warning. It's just boop. Oh, by the way, they give you no warning. Oh, shit, hurry. Oh, damn it. Is that you that that's on purpose or it's just how the machine works or? Well, in fact, uh, humans have changed. Uh, and you can see in this machines how humans uh, 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 approach towards mas machines have changed because 50 years ago, that was a normal way how a machine w would be addressed. You go, you dr drop your money and the machine does what it should do. Today, we all expect that machines talk back to us, they signal things back to us, and uh, there's a cultural um, development here that kind of is highlighted by using a classic photo booth. So everywhere I stay in Berlin, there's always like a vintage photo strip. It's always like in the bathroom or it's on the fridge or above the stove. As the creators and the owners of this, do you guys still take photos in the photo booth, photo automat? More or less every week we take photos because we, we check the booths and uh, also for, yeah, for fun. <laughs> we started it because we love the photos and the, the, the love doesn't uh, slow down. <laughs> ah, yeah, you know, see, it's, it's not a glamorous job. Oh, wow. It's, it's, uh, Beautiful. But you can also do um, stupid jobs with, with a big smile. And hey, you sure can, yes you can. <laughs> Damon Dominique always has at least one question, okay? You can okay, if transportation between West Berlin and West Germany was pretty limited, like you could only get from one to the other via airplane, like weren't those airplanes like tampered with? You have East Germany and West Germany with two completely different ideologies, you think and then the wall comes way. down well, you know, and everyone's like, 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 they were like sick on all these sides. Even so so in my mind, I see like this East Germany and West Germany, it's like two best friends that were united forever. I need answers now. I found the man to answer my questions. He runs a tour here in Berlin called the Rude Bastards Tour. <clears throat> Let's go find Kai. I think that most people when they think of the Berlin Wall, they think that it is on the border of West Germany and East Germany, but it's not. The Berlin Wall is actually over here and it's built around this blue West Berlin. There's East and West Berlin and then there's East and West Germany, right? So East Berlin, in essence, is East Germany, yeah. right? And West Berlin is an island surrounded by East Germany. We don't even need that line, to be honest. 
right? See, I'm already fucking confused. So, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot happening. So basically, it's like east, west, east, west. Yes. Where was there a border between East Germany and West Germany that was not Berlin like I'm talking the rest of Germany Berlin always gets the attention you know because yeah. a lot of people were here but was there like a huge border Berlin was capture the flag you got Berlin you got the war when we talk about the Second World War I mean the division between East and, and West was done overnight uh, you know it was a hundred thousand Soviet soldiers that basically divided East and West period from my Berlin experience it seems like the things that are happening the places that people hang out tend to be where East Berlin was I'm talking like Friedrichshain I don't know where Berghain is like all the clubs they're kind of like in East Berlin a lot of the places that are up and come uh, not up and coming because they've been popular yeah. are um, border to where East and West was and so a lot of the border areas were they started being developed. Here are the neighborhoods that I feel like most people hang out in in Berlin. Um, what was once East Berlin had these neighborhoods and what was once West Berlin had these neighborhoods. Now, the Berlin Wall looked a little something like this, which is interesting to me because again, all of these neighborhoods that people now hang out in are next to the wall. Those are the places to be because they were being developed again. Is that what you're saying? Well, 1990s, people, they started fucking spending money. You know, people yeah. Like Sony, right? You have Potsdam Platz, a big spot which is desert you know these were spots where people start throwing money in and saying all right cool well you know what it's fucking cheap um and i'm gonna build a really fantastic location you were just saying before we got to mauer park that they were about to like demolish this and put up condos like who thinks that that's a good idea like why would you ever want to do that again they like to protest here they they spoke loud enough like over here for example um this is you know where they do karaoke and um you ever sang karaoke here? Uh, not personally, not yet. All right, it seems like not many people are a huge fan, understandably, of the Soviet-style socialism that was happening in East Germany. But it's like now, every time I go to a, like a hipster alternative bohemian coffee shop, you go to the bathroom and there are all these like bumper stickers and they're all like, fuck capitalism, I hate capitalism. I guess for just personally, do you like despise capitalism or despise socialism? We live in a world that, uh, Everyone, the, the association of success is money oriented. And um, if your goal is money, which is okay, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but if your, your goal is solely money, then it, it blocks out everything else. People here, they do that little job that they have to do to live their life. All right, so obviously World War II, um, the Cold War, the fall of the Berlin Wall get a lot of attention in Berlin because it's history that needs to be learned. But what is, is there another part in Berlin's history or Germany's history that isn't really talked about because it's overshadowed by these other events in history? Pre-1900s, there is so much more history behind Berlin. And it's, it's understandable that people are like, oh, well, this is not really that interesting it's because away, yeah, yeah. we can't connect to it in this case. Pre-1900s, there's so much Prussia. Leaders, for example, like uh, Frederick William, Frederick Great, all these guys that really helped develop this city. So what, what did you say over here? <laughs> you were over here and uh, you heard our conversation. Yes, and you I had heard your conversation. To say. And another thing that I thought found important, I figured it's important to mention, is that we completely ignore our colonialist past. Mm. Like even in a history class, we learned where Germany was involved in uh, colonialism for like 30 years, and that's basically it. We, uh, like I was recently at this Umbenennungs festival because we have a couple of streets and places in Berlin that are still named with uh, racist terms. Ah. So they're changing that now. Yeah, and I was at the festival where I was, where they like did a, 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 a ceremonial change of the street name. Enough to say I'm sorry about. Yes, I know, but that's right. also something There's that we, a should lot, change. Yeah. we should not have names like that in 2020. I'm just saying, I agree with you. Yeah, but, but it, it's, it's being done better here than in other places. That can be, that right. can be true, but it can, still can be done better. Are you from Berlin? Yes, I'm born here actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. And what are you yeah. doing here at Mauer Park right now? Actually, I was going to Boulder, but uh, I cut my f my hand in the morning. What is it that German people love rock climbing? I'm going rock climbing in two hours. Yes. Why do you guys? What? I did do that when it was very little in the Alps, no? But we can do that actually on real rocks. <laughs> But uh, actually I'm doing it now because my physical therapist uh, recommended it. Because I have a bit of problems with my wrists and the physical therapist said that's like the best kind of workout that you can do that doesn't stress your wrists so much. Good fucking dirty napkin. This is 
dumb. Never mind. Why do Germans love bouldering? You guys love this. I don't know, man. I think it's because we have the Alps. Oh. At the boulder gym this is the last place i thought that i would be and i'm only here because again i was editing a youtube video in this cafe that's known if you want to like work on your laptop the place to go is called saint Ober oberholz at rosenthaler platz or rosa luxemburg platz and i was sitting in there and he comes up and he said damon and i said yes and he said what's up and i said let's go Yeah, I don't know if um, this is my thing. I get to the top and I'm like, get me down! I'm like an American mother who wants her, like, her children to like, get off the swing set because it's too dangerous. I'm like, I don't have insurance. Do you realize this? <laughs> what is this, by the way? <laughs> That's to clean off the... Yeah, you actually clean the walls with this. Oh my goodness. Wow, I even sounded like a mother right there. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness gracious. You guys, one thing I really like about Germany is that it's like cool to be friendly here. Whereas in other countries, it's not so cool to like be so open and like warm and welcoming. Um, I really like it. Everyone's like been very kind and gentle. The word is gentle. This is like the most bro thing I've ever done. <laughs> the straightest thing I've ever done. <laughs> Germany, Germany, America. Strength, power. That's so strange. strength. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's enough. That's all the straightness I can provide for the night. <laughs> okay, you are in university here, U uni. Yeah. Germany is pretty like worldwide known for having really cheap tuition, right? Oh yeah, there's like, um, you only need to pay like 300 euros per, per day. Uh, no, <laughs> per half a year. So it's like 600 euros a year, but the big plus guys, uh, 200 euros of these 300 euros is just for the train system here. I mean, you have to pay it, but then you get like a free ticket for the whole year. So you can go around the train. So it's actually just 100 bucks for the university. Oh, like, <laughs> that's me off camera. Like, oh. Backhand is open for the public right now. Have you been to Backhand? No, actually not. Interview over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are reaching the climax of this video. We are here at an international donor stand. Let's get it going. Ich möchte zweimal Halloumi mit Falafel. Bitte. Right? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> donor. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> okay, so a donor kebab yeah. is like huge here. Yeah, you get it everywhere. Like at all hours. Yeah. Have you ever eaten one for breakfast? Mm, That's like probably. A <laughs> I mean, when you come back yeah. from like a rave or you went out party, like it's the only stores that are so open. So, uh, so it's that drunk. counts kind of like breakfast, I guess. Drunk food. Oh yeah. When Germans speak English, you guys always say man. Like, I don't ever say man, but Germans <laughs> say man all the time. Yeah, man. <laughs> Actually, you say that in German as well, man. Like. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Yeah man. Yeah digger. Oh man, all my friends are gonna see this. I'm gonna cringe so bad. <laughs> It's like, it's like Helvetica. Y'all, I thought I reached the climax of this video when we were at International Dooner, but I've made it to a German apartment. Yeah, we are right now at the home, <laughs> home party. My last question for this video, are you a Club Mate kind of guy? Me? Yeah, do you drink this? Of course. Yeah, man. So this is like, not just a Berlin cliche, like people actually drink this. Yeah, it makes you warm. Inside. Do you guys really drink Club Mate? Yes. yes. So I drink it as breakfast. It's like an energy drink. No, no. Like Have you ever tried it? No. Oh, you should, should I get it? Yeah. I'm gonna get a Club Mate. Yo, guys, if you're a magician in Berlin, hit me up. Like, whatever what? music you're doing, 
<laughs> a magician? No, musician. Yeah. Oh, musician. Oh, did I say magician? Yeah, <laughs> you're a magician as well. I will now try the Club Mate. This is a moment for Germany. Mm. Mm. It's good though, right? Oh. About 50% sugar, man. Oh, watch out. <laughs> no, actually. <laughs> oh. Tastes like peach soda. <sighs> Y'all. I've wrecked this party enough with my English and lack of German. And the fact that I'm a YouTuber making a video about Berlin. It's time to get out of here. <laughs> There are things about Germany that I will never quite understand, like why your language has three genders and how those genders change depending on where the noun lands in a sentence. You know, even tiny things that probably often go unnoticed, like uh, how the stoplight turns yellow before it turns green, which to my American mind would mean that you could possibly speed through the light, anticipating it to turn yellow and then green. <sighs> but then there's everything else that makes total sense to me. Like, when I say that life in Berlin feels more free, it's not freedom in the sense that you're so free to drink in a park or swim nude at a random lake. No, it's more like each person in this video, really. From letting yourself go completely and actually, actually being present in the moment. Gearing your life in the direction you see for your life and not the direction everyone else wants for your life. To adding just a little bit of magic to people's otherwise ordinary lives. To learning. But while we'll sipping on a beer at 1.30 p.m. on a Thursday while we're at it. To university students taking time to just go do something together. Like, oh, I always like Berlin. Berlin. I fuck with you. I hear you loud and clear. I will make my way out just as soon as I jump out my way out. Look, thank you all for watching this video. Thank you to everyone who participated in this video. Thank you for everyone who signed up to be in the video. Thank you to the potential production companies that may reach out wanting to take some of the work off my hands, please. And potentially pitch the show to like a Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, HBO Max, whatever the latest one is these days. I'm looking to build a team, y'all. I would love for y'all to reach out to all these so I don't get kicked out. <laughs> no, bro, I think it's time for me to go. I, I did what I had to do here. I learned, I love Berlin. It's not my last time being here. And frankly, I think most Berliners are ready to show me the way out. My train's back to Paris. Berlin said, you ain't gotta go home, but you sure gotta get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Later. Hi, I'm still here. That was me closing the door. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.